we uh, go on live in one minute. Okay, so um, we, we are good. And um, just want to uh, thanks everybody who joining us um, today and again, um, and welcome to USCC webinar. I'd like to a uh, good evening, uh, everybody in Asia, and also a good morning, um, everybody here um, on the other side of the ocean in US. And this particular one, we have our host from Canada too. So uh, welcome everybody. And once again, if uh, you never joined uh, our webinar before, my name is George um, Duomini. I'm the founder and the CEO of US College Sport Camp. And our organization uh, started about eight years ago, since 2013. Um, it's a program, it's a camp that uh, we um, like to open up opportunity for uh, um, young athletes to compete, showcase of their talents in front of uh, US college coaches. And in this particular one for badminton, it's uh, Canadian college coaches. And you will find out more of, of, of the information uh, a little bit later today. Um, you know, um, again, uh, I, I'm the one who uh, started the U.S. College Sport Camp. And we starting this U.S. College Sports Camp because of me. 30 years ago, I came to U.S. because I want to follow my dream, uh, passion in tennis. And I play for South Alabama for four years with a tennis scholarship. And, um, you know, uh, further on, I, I went on an MBA school and, and worked for Morgan Stanley for about 25 years in the financial industry. Um, our headquarter of U.S. College Sport Camp is in Asia. Uh, it's been about eight years now, and, uh, but we do operating in many countries in Asia. We have a full-time uh, dedicated team to um, stand by and help you in any way you can. You can always reach us by our social network. Um, or you can email us and Facebook us or Instagram us anytime that you need help or like to learn more about, you know, our camp and also opportunity and, um, you know, for college uh, scholarship, either here in the U.S. Or, or Canada. Currently, we offer seven sports, um, golf, tennis, badminton, um, basketball, volleyball, swimming, but we're certainly looking forward to uh, add more uh, sports such as triathlon, fencing, or, or even bowling um, for you know years to come. But um, you know, sorry that we couldn't be there um, with you all this summer um, due to the situation with the COVID. And um, you know, we bring you uh, uh, you meet to meet with coaches and our partner around the globe. Um, you know, in the same objective to provide you more opportunity to um, thrive your sports and also the education. And now, you know, maybe we have to change the name. We no longer only provide opportunity for college level. Um, we also uh, given um, kids uh, opportunity for the high school level or professional level. Um, as you know, uh, many, many of our guests came to uh, our webinar before. Um, they, you know, they're from uh, high school in college prep in U.S. or they're in the sport academy. Okay, so today webinar, um, we normally uh, invite our um, college coaches or, or our partner, um, or they are expert in the field um, to basically, you know, give you some information and an idea uh, of the situation that's happening around the world. Um, our webinar is, we can try to run through about 30 to 40 minutes um, of the presentation and we leave about 10 to 20 minutes for a Q and A. Just a housekeeping um, and the rule, um, please mute your microphone, um, you know, during the session. And if you have any question, please uh, look at the bottom of the screen there's a chat uh, messages that you can always send it to us. Um, please write down every question that you, you like to ask our co-hosts today. Uh, that way we can uh, give them uh, a question and have them answer uh, at the end of the uh, webinar. And today we also have live in 18 of our Facebook across uh, the group. Um, not only um, uh, on the Zoom that you joined today, but everybody who uh, on the Facebook, 
will be able to watch um, of what's going on uh, this morning as well. To not long overdue, um, just want to give you opportunity. And today we have a privilege um, to learn about sports scholarship and education in Canada. Uh, we are welcome and um, and you know very privileged to have Coach Naim, who also been to our bas uh, badminton camp in Thailand. Is that two years ago? Uh, but let 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 him uh, speak on that. But I think it's about two or three years ago. And um, and also uh, my good friends, uh, Captain Nalitam on Nun, uh, who also have academy Kunsana uh, Badminton Academy in Thailand. And also our guest, uh, Li Pui, um, she's, you know, uh, event director for um, Michael Badminton Academy in Malaysia. So we have great uh, three horses today and, um, you know, can't wait to, uh, to hear what uh, they have to say about the badminton world and COVID and also, the, uh, you know, learn more opportunity about the, the scholarship in Canada. So um, good morning, Coach Naeem. Um, I, I, we couldn't hear you. Um, your mic. Oh. Okay, you got it. It's on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So, good morning, Coach. Good morning and good day, guys. Yeah. How, how's the weather in Alberta? You know what? Uh, it's really nice and sunny, but for some reason, it's been really windy this year. For I, I've, I've been here forty-eight years, and I've never seen it so windy. But uh, the sun is shining. Uh, people are getting out. Uh, tennis courts are open. Things are opening up, so it's it's looking better and better day by day. So yeah, good. Waiting for gyms to open now. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't need those uh, gym right now if the weather nice, right? Well, I'd for badminton, just to get in. That's that's the only reason we need the gym to get in at the schools. We're we're shut down. They they won't allow us yet, but I'm hoping hoping that'll come up soon. So we start practicing again. Good. So, um, you know, you are our first guest uh, in Thailand. Is that two years or three years ago, sir? Two years ago, 2017. It was an amazing trip. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, you, yeah. you are the first Canadian coaches that uh, been to our U.S. college sport camp coach. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we, we live privileged and I actually was there, attended, and it's uh, a lot of kids and they, they yes. really want to learn more about opportunity. So here you are, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay thanks. Uh, so I'll, I'll just give you a little background before I get into scholarships and stuff. Uh, we have three conferences. One is in Alberta, the other one is Ontario, and then Athletic Canada. British Columbia used to be in, but uh, they don't have enough schools. You have to have minimum of four schools to get into the league. So they've mm -hmm. dropped out. Alberta has four teams. Uh, we're looking at increasing it to six. There's two more coming in this year. Uh, it might get delayed because of COVID, but we're hoping it doesn't. Ontario has 13 teams, 13 schools, and Atlantic Canada has five schools. So um, ACAC is Alberta Athletic uh, College Conference. So we have four schools. What we do is we do four tournaments. Uh, every school will host one. Uh, we start in September. Our first tournament starts in November. Uh, the second one is in January and then February. And then in March, uh, what we do when we run our tournaments, um, according to the standing, number one will play number four, two, and three for uh, a team championship for one day and then on the next day they have to qualify for CCAA which is Canadian College Athletic Conference uh, to qualify and go play against all the other schools in Canada. Uh, that's basically how it starts. Um, now when it comes down to scholarships every school can give out scholarships whatever they please to Alberta has scholarship for a lot of international students. Uh, I'll go with King's. What King's does is most of the school, we, the only bad part is Canada doesn't have a full scholarship for any sports. Uh, we have uh, same sports as, as, as US does, but there isn't a full scholarship. Uh, international students 
have to pay double the tuition. So if say there's ten thousand dollar tuition for local students, for international it'll be another ten on top of it. So what King's has done, uh, we waive off that ten thousand. So any international student is basically paying what a local student would. Plus, uh, I run a few tournaments a year. All the money that comes from those tournaments uh, goes towards the scholarship for international students. So going back, if, if, if the tuition is uh, $10,000, um, they basically have to pay half for, for uh, joining, this, joining the team. Uh, they have to be a full-time student, minimum of three credit courses, full-time credit courses. So that means nine credits, 18 credits for the semester to qualify to play for a school with a 2.0 GPA. If you're under 2.0 GPA, which is only 50%, uh, it shouldn't be hard for any kid to get it. Uh, they get disqualified. There's no scholarship. Uh, and there is no place in the team for them. I have an international player who's a world rank from Guyana right now with me for the last two years, and he's made nationals every year, and uh, he's getting a scholarship with me. Uh, we're allowed to have three international students, uh, two men or two women and one male and two female, doesn't matter. We're trying to go with four now, and it's gonna go through. So it'll be two male and two female as international students for each school. Um, at King's, we are a very small school. It's a private school in Edmonton with less than 1,000 kids. Our uh, professors are all, 90% of them have PhD. Our class size is only 22. We have uh, dorms that the kids stay right on top where the school is, uh, there's no transportation needed. Um, in Canada, international students are allowed to work 22 hours a week. So as they're going to school, they can have a part-time job at the school. Um, schools do hire them as security guards or in the cafeteria or anywhere else that they, they, they need to be. So they can earn a few dollars while they're going to school. Um, um, now, what happens with our, uh, the way we perform, we qualify is we have seven matches. Uh, there's two singles, uh, ladies singles, two men singles, one men's doubles, one ladies doubles, and one mixed. Every school will have, have to rank their players from one to five. You have to have minimum of three girls and three guys to qualify and maximum of five girls and five guys to make a team. So as soon as you rank your players, they have to play against a ranked player from, from another team. Uh, if you sit out your number one guy, your number two becomes number one. So it's, it's, it's really fair and um, a lot of good competition. Ontario last year hosted and they had uh, at least six or seven international students. Four of them were from India and uh, they used to play for Indian national team, so they did clean house. They, this is the first time Ontario beat us. Alberta has been uh, champion for the last two years. This is the first time we lost against Ontario. Uh, it's very competitive. Um, uh, we, uh, for qualification, you can only qualify for one event for CCAA championship. So if you qualify for singles, that's all you play. Uh, there's two players that go from each, so two singles, two doubles, two mixed. So if you're number two, you can sit out and qualify for an, another event if you want to. But if you qualify for your first event, that's what you need to play and have to play. Uh, I hope I'm not going too fast. Uh, if there's any questions in between, uh, you're more than welcome to, 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 to uh, get in and then ask. Um, Coach, I, I think um, since we have a, a small group of uh, audience, we uh, are paid to so, um, get questions and ask, I guess. Uh, yeah. So one of the things, though, if you do not mind, if you go back a little bit bigger. So 
PCAA is just like PCAA here in the US, right? So they come. I can't hear you. I think your mic is off. My microphone off? No, it's getting a little better. Uh, um, everybody, please stay on mute. Yeah, it's good now. Okay, hold on. Let me mute everybody. All right, so um, well, we'll make sure you don't, I don't mute you. Okay, so um, CCAA, it's just like NCAA here in the US, right? That's right, exactly. So how many sports that currently, um, you know, offer in CCAA? Uh, there's 10 sports. So there's hockey, men's and women's hockey, the volleyball, uh, men's and women's soccer, uh, basketball, men's and women's basketball, and volleyball, men's and women's, and uh, badminton. Okay. Great. So, 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 so same thing uh, and golf too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you, you have about 10 sport in CCAA and yes. uh, in term of university in, uh, Canada, uh, how many are member of CCAA? Um, not too many. Most of them are all colleges. Uh, CCAA majority of them are colleges. Uh, there's, Got, Alberta's got, uh, I've got it right here. Uh, Alberta has 10. Uh, Ontario would probably have over 20. And then Atlantic Canada has some universities and there's about uh, 12 of them. So it's, 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 it's pretty huge. Yeah. So, um, you know, compared to US, as we normally um, know about, it's about 2,000 colleges that have sports yes. um, programs. And I, yes. I see CCAA, I, I saw the, a number, maybe a hundred somewhere around. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And, but uh, most of them offer, uh, have a badminton program, right? Most of them have a badminton program and they offer scholarships in every sport too. Okay. So that's the scholarships like Kings will offer scholarship for soccer, volleyball, basketball, hockey, whatever, for everything. Perfect. And, and how competitive for the badminton? And you mentioned that you have some a national player on your team? Yes, I have a world-ranked player from, from Guyana. Uh, Ontario has uh, four-ranked players from, from India. Uh, we've had Korean national players in the past. We've had uh, players from Japan in the past. Wow. So it's, wow. it's very, very competitive. Yes. Um, that, that, that was it. I mean, uh, a lot of people like two years ago when you came to Thailand, um, how, how did you see the level of the, uh, of the athlete? You know, I, I was, I was amazed. The players, they, they, they would fit right in. Uh, some of the top players were as good as the players from, from international or a lot of the other players uh, that go to badminton academies. There's three, four badminton academies in Alberta. There's two in Edmonton. There's about four in Calgary. And these kids start playing when, you know, at the age of five or six and they train in these academies and they come to these schools and the only reason they come to these schools is because of badminton. Okay. So it's, it's very competitive. We've had our uh, Olympian play for, for us uh, that played for, for Canada. Oh, okay. Michelle. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. So, and, and could you run through uh, the season, how long is the season and how many matches are they playing and the national? Yeah, so, so the season, uh, like I said, so the season will start in September, uh, hopefully. Uh, this year, it's 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 with the COVID. We're, we're not too sure. We're uh, things are changing just about every day. Last week we could. This week we can't. Next week we might. So, but uh, if we start in September, our first tournament is in November that we will host, and all four schools will play against each other, and then again seven matches, two singles two women singles, uh, two men singles, uh, doubles, and mixed. And during those tournaments, it's up to each coach, whatever and however they want their players to play. So if my number one guy, I don't want to play him singles, there's another guy from another school that's stronger than him, uh, you know, I, I can put him in mixed doubles or, or men's doubles. So it's, it's a point system. So what we do is when we play, uh, the winner gets five points. Uh, second place gets four and three, two and one. And at the end of the season, we count the total score. And that's how we rank the teams from one to four. And that's what uh, every province does. 
so there's a lot of matches. So there's four interlocks in like uh, tournaments. And then we have Alberta series. Uh, there are at least four Alberta series that all these uh, players go and play in them too. And it's an open tournament uh, that anybody can play. And then I run two tournaments at King's University. Nate, that's another team in Edmonton, they run two tournaments that these all players play. So they get, they get a lot of different competition away from the colleges and the universities to, to go and play against some other players too. Great. So would you say around, what, 15 tournaments? in a year uh in total if if you i'd say about 12, 12. tournaments at least yeah and and uh, when they go to these tournaments everything is paid by the school uh it doesn't cost the kids anything at all uh if if, if it's an overnight it's paid by the school and if it's a day trip it's paid by the school team good good wow they, they got pay um to travel and and, and compete and get better and um, now they, you know, have an education and everything's perfect. Absolutely, it's 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 a great opportunity. And you know, another thing is, I, most of the kids that that for them, I had a kid from China a few years ago, and uh, for some reason, Canada being a you know very well, our population is only forty million with a huge country, it's very easy for these kids to apply for PR permanent residence, and majority of these kids end up staying in Canada. Mm. And, and and that's another good thing, you know, if they found me, they, 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 they want to settle in Canada, they have great opportunities to do that. Yeah. And, so, and like I said, they, they're allowed to work. Is that a faster, uh, you know, process if you... Uh, that states, yes. And especially if, if you've stayed and you've had education in Canada and you've had a part-time job, it's very easy to get a PR. Especially after after you get your degree, most of the kids would have worked for some company, and then they'll sponsor them. And then within a year or two years after they've been here, uh, they can apply for it. Okay, good, 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 wonderful. All right, yeah. so uh, thank you, Coach, and then we we will like to you come back again um, at, toward the end of uh, uh, Q and A. Um, so the we're well, leading up to my good friends here. Uh, he just joined. Um, no, Captain. Uh, your, your your microphone is not um, working yet. Sorry. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, can you hear me? Uh, well, can, yeah. Can you yeah. hear me? We can hear right. you now. And uh, Nung and Naeem is a good friend. Hey. Hey, hi, Naeem. You're looking, you're looking good, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, uh, I'm practicing at uh, Ponta Na right now. <laughs> yeah. Still playing. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, now now yeah, so, we're live, right? Uh, the Academy. Uh, yeah, live here. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So, well, I'm um, uh, just uh, just um, came out from the game <laughs> oh. with Boonsak. <laughs> with Boonsak, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, uh, Ning, could you tell us a, a little bit more about your program? I, I know you, you know, play at the highest level, and now uh, you want to have an uh, academy that help. Um, kid to grow, um, you know, both in sport and also education. Okay. Um, actually, um, we uh, right now, as uh, I know, Na Naeem came here once, and you you came, and Naeem not not once, twice to come come and see the the academy and everything. Um, now, um, we we ch we changed the academy to um, Mr. Um, uh, Bunsak Ponsana. It's it's called Ponsana Badminton Academy. Ponsana <coughs> Badminton Academy is um is uh well it's 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 all in one it's a uh, it's mr bunsak ponsana is our legend of um thailand badminton single players he's five time olympians he went to olympic for five times the most in the wow. world yes and um in athens he um he went to the semifinals in the athens in in the olympics athens, uh, in greece in the semifinals he lost to taufik hariyat which he got the gold medal so Bunsak got third place, uh -huh. and um, so this is our academy, which um, we we had uh, we have um, eight courts, and we have a um, place to upstairs uh, to uh, for for train uh, for uh, a camp. I mean, um, a dormitory upstairs um, in in the in the court, which um, we have in Bangkok right now. And um, so what our academy does is uh, we have all the 
ex Thai national team, lead by Mr. Bunsa. Um, I, I, I just wanted him to say hi. <laughs> Mr. Bunsak is here. Bunsak Ponsana. <laughs> Hello. Say hi. <laughs> hi. Okay, yeah. This is Mr. Bunsak. So he's the uh, owner of the academy. He's the owner and he's um, the head coach of the uh, Ponsana Academy. And um, now we have around like, around like um, almost 50, 50 uh, players, student players who train here. So, um, and we train, right now we have um, a lot that comes from Europe, uh, that comes here like France, England, you come and train here. And some from um, uh, Malaysia came, Japan just came to, to come and train, come and train here, fully trained for like one month, two months, whatever um, here. Because we have um, around almost 10 coaches, which they're all ex, Almost all of them are, are ex Thai national team here. So um, uh, and I, 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 I was talking to Mr. Bunsak about uh, this your scholarship, Naim, uh, and everything yes. that we we can do something together here. Absolutely. Yeah, um, there's uh, more about uh, 50, 50 kids <laughs> uh, around like um, age eight to eight to. 21, 22, yeah, here, so that, that train every, every day, every day. They, they, um, there's only Monday that uh, it's a rest day for them. So they train six days a week. Uh -huh. So um, glad, uh, gladly if, uh, you know, if, if uh, we can exchange or, um, because um, most, some of the kids here are, are top in Thailand in, in their ages, you know, and for, for juniors, for juniors, they're um, uh, age under uh, 13, 15, 17, and 19. That's, that's for juniors. And, and they go compete all around the world because for BWF, um, you know, they have world rankings for juniors also. So we have three or four of them that which are competing right now uh, and mostly are competing in Thailand. So we have them. Um, uh, for juniors, we are very, very strong for juniors here. Uh, and going up to compete the, uh, and going up to, um, you know, to, to ha higher level in, in the uh, adults, in adults. And yeah, and hopefully um, if they're interested in, in uh, going to, to uh, I mean, to, to Canada, maybe I can do some tryouts or, or, do some camps, uh, which George, U.S. Um, sports camp, uh, you know, this is more interesting than two, three years because, ago because of the camp because I think here's more, more of a kids and more of a training. Professional trainers are here. Yeah, um, maybe um, we can join and do, do something together for the Ponsana uh, Badminton Academy here. Uh, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, would would be nice would be nice if we can uh, if we can do a camp together with Malaysia and then Thailand. You know, around the same time, few days in yeah. Malaysia and yeah. then in Thailand. And last time we had yeah. a lot of little kids. Uh, with now that you have uh, kids that can go to school, uh, you know, high school kids, uh, that would work out just awesome. Another thing I, I forgot to bring up, uh -huh. which is amazing news for you guys, we have one school that will offer ESL, which is English as Second Language. I think that was the problem last time I came, most of the kids couldn't get into university because of uh, English. So for two years, they can take English as Second Language uh -huh. and still play, and there will be no uh, fee for them. It, 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 it's a full scholarship. So all they have to pay is for their room and board for two years while they're taking English as second language, and then they'll have to go to university. So I've, I've come up with that and, and, and Nate has agreed to, with it. And uh, Jordan, remember George, we had a chat with him last time. Uh, he's not only athletic director at Nate now, he's a VP for all sports in CCAA. Wow. So, uh, you know, if, if both of us can, can come out, that means we can uh, even, um, you know, it's not sorry, only that. Uh, I, I think the, the signal is not that. Oh, okay.
No, that, uh, that, that's good, Nung. Um, well, congratulations and uh, see your beautiful uh, academy there now. And, uh, no, it's not that bad. Great. Well, that, thank you again, uh, Nung. All right. And uh, uh, best of luck with, uh, with the academy. And uh, we, we're looking forward to host the academy in Thailand with you soon when you safe travel again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, our next guest, I, I like to introduce uh, Li Pui. Um, she's uh, with uh, Michael Badminton Academy uh, in Malaysia. So um, I, I like to invite her to speak about her program and also our partnership uh, when you come uh, to Asia again, Naim. And we suddenly want to, uh, um, you know, have opportunity for a camp in Malaysia too. Uh, Li Pui, may I please turn over to you? Hey, thanks, George. Um, is it okay if I could share the screen? Uh, yes, please, please. Yes, awesome. Um, could you enable if you don't mind? Oh, what happened? <laughs> Hello. You should be able to do it. Yeah. Um, it's still uh -huh. disabled, actually. Disabled. I will invite you as a cohort to see if it help anything. Oh, okay. I, I, I've got it. By the way, I was very <laughs> impressed with your, uh, you know, the, the Michael Academy last time when you showed me. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, can you guys see the screen? Uh, yes, I can. Yes. Yes, awesome. So okay, um, so thank you, George, for having it, for having me, and uh, hello everyone. Good day. So uh, before I start, just a quick introduction of uh, myself. So my name is Pui. I'm the event director of Michael's Badminton Academy. Um, I'm also a proud member of the Council of the Olympic Solidarity. So actually, many actually ask whether or not I'm a former national player. Um, thing Michael's is, Academy. I. Thing is, I'm not a national uh, player, unfortunately, and a lot of people ask me why. So to share with you actually my story as well, because I do So this was the time I was growing up because before the year 2002. So we didn't really have the facilities or the opportunity when I was growing up. So as I was growing up, basically, as you can see, I was basically playing at the fields, probably at the roadside. And also, if you see, uh, if we are lucky enough, our school will have the facilities, right? But again, badminton is huge, huge in Malaysia. So we are really, really packed. So we might be really lucky to even get a chance to be in the court itself. So you can pretty much say that, you know, my dreams of becoming a, a national player were pretty much crushed because I really didn't have the opportunity. But being that, you know, I'm very, very passionate about badminton and we still hold very strongly to the dream. So we had this dream and we wanted to make a difference by bringing the passion of badminton to communities. So where actually play, players can have a safe place to play, to learn and also be given the pathway and also connecting friends um, to because badminton. So that is actually how Michael's Badminton Academy was born and also how our story actually starts. So in year 2002, we actually opened our uh, private badminton center with a 16 badminton court officiated by our then former Prime Minister of Dr. Siti Hasma. And we were also accredited as the first largest badminton center in Malaysia. And we also are, um, affiliated with the World Chinese Badminton Federation. We are actually the Malaysia branch of it. And this is actually, we have three venues. So we have uh, Bukit Puchong and the club, which is like, uh, near the KL Central. And of course, we have another one in Port Dixon, which is an hour away. And this is a, quite a popular destination because it's very close to the beach where we actually have actually beach training as well. So it's very popular. Um, this is a very um, uh, quick overview of what we have in our facilities. Of course, as you can see, 
we do have our indoor badminton courts all rubberized or into international standards. As well, we do have our own retail uh, that sells the sports equipment and then we have a little cafe as well. We also have a dormitory facilities as well. So being a, uh, this is some of the services that we provide being a one-stop center. So we actually run corporate events. We also run nationwide events, international events, international camps. This is actually one of the photos that we actually brought a team to over to Guangzhou, China for a, a week's uh, short-term training camp. And we also do have our uh, badminton, weekly badminton sessions. We also do run uh, badminton clinics for schools. We also do sports travel. This is the picture where we actually brought the, a team of players to play and compete in a tournament in New Zealand. As well, we also do sports tour. So we know we like to keep our uh, students motivated. So we bring them over to see their favorite uh, players in action, actually. And uh, this is one of our CSR project. We also like to like to give back to the community. So we actually launched our Hope for Change charity program in the year 2011, where we actually provide badminton programs to underprivileged children. Um, so we wanted to give the equal opportunity as well to them. And this uh, program itself won two major awards. One of them, of course, the Asia Sports Industry Award, and one the other was Medica Award for this, this program. So about our training, we do have our certified coaches, you know, and we really wanted a holistic development uh, training program for our students. So we train our students from as young as six year olds, uh, anywhere between the grassroots level up to the national levels as well. So has in the holistic development, we really want to focus not just the skills, but of course the overall development where we actually concentrate on attitude, skills, physical, mental, all to develop an overall development of the students. Next with the first be the experience as well, because what we believe is how you actually learn is actually through experience and through exposure. So we organize a lot of tournaments, friendly matches, camps. So these are the kind of things that we encourage our students to actually partake in so that they can gain a lot of experience from it all. And in terms of the connection, as I mentioned to you earlier, we are actually part of the, the uh, World Badminton Federation. So we do, ha we have, and also being very actively in the uh, badminton scene, uh, we get a lot of players around the world uh, to come over with us to do their uh, short-term uh, training program. So it will be ranged from individuals, school groups, badminton clubs, academies, and also towards the uh, National Association that comes to us to do their, their short-term program. This also in return gives actually our local students to actually be able to spar with them. And that is actually the exposure as well and the experience um, for them as well. So um, us, so we have been already 18 years uh, in the business as well. As you can see, we have achieved a lot of production. Yes, we are the first privatized button center we are the largest and we also host the largest badminton tournament. So having said this, you know, we are pioneers in the industries, you know, we pride ourselves as being innovators and most importantly, we are very, very passionate about what we do. And of course, the most exciting part and of course, the scholarship program. Um, in recent years, um, you know, we have, we have been receiving uh, offers from uh, like states, uh, UK, Singapore, Hong Kong, and um, for our students uh, to you know, offer scholarship to our students. So this is some of the pictures that uh, our students got a scholarship over there in the States as well as in the United Kingdom. Um, because unfortunately, uh, Malaysia doesn't really have um, that scholarship for athletes in Malaysia. They only, only uh, focus really solely on the national levels. So, of course, having this partnership, of course, with a good friend here, George. So, we are very grateful for that because that actually allows us to extend more of these opportunities to, you know, to extend to more students and more athletes as well. 
Um, so basically, that's towards the end of the uh, presentation. Of course, if you would like to know more, you can always check us out in our website, www.mba101.com, or you can actually check us out in our social media, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube as well. Um, so with that, I thank you all for your time. Um, so um, if there's any quick question, I will, you know, uh, glad to answer them. And like I we end it at Michael's, we guarantee you a smashing the time. Thank you. No, thank that. Thank you, uh, Ripui. And uh, this, this is wonderful to uh, have an opportunity to, to 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 get to know you. And now we have uh, Michael Academy as one of our partners. So Naeem, now you really have to come to Asia. Oh, I, I'm so excited. I can't wait to be there. This is great opportunity for some, some of your uh, players that, that can come out and get a scholarship and get a good education. Yeah, no, this, this, is, this is amazing. This is, this is great. Yes, it's amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more opportunity these kids can have, the, the better it is, yes. Good. So now, now leading up to the question of, uh, from this um, audience too, is that how, how one player can qualify for the scholarship? What, what do they have to do? How, how will you be able to see if they're good enough for, for your team? Well, that's the thing is, is you know, I've, I've had a lot of kids send me their videos. Um, and then uh, their, their world ranking, if they're ranked, if they're ranked. Um, or we've uh, we've had some in in, in Canada, and, and that's where I go. That's where I go. Uh, the, the the main thing is that they have to qualify to go to school and have to be a full time student. Uh, they have to take minimum of three courses, which are three credit courses. So it's nine credits per semester, eighteen credits total and and they can they can they can be a full-time student and qualify for for uh for for a, for a scholarship and to play uh keeping 2.0 average I, I keep saying that 2.0 because i've had a kid that came all the way from uh, korea uh, no it was from china sorry and couldn't keep up his marks and uh, had to go back so it's it's very important that yes, badminton is number one, but but education at the same time too. You have to keep up with your with your grades, or otherwise uh, you're not good to school or you're not good to yourself. So uh, basically, all they have to do is qualify to get to school. And once we get the, into this, we have one um, counselor that deals strictly with international students. And, and then the international students, if they're interested, I can uh, give them her email and they can uh, go through her and see what the school requires for them to get in. And the other one is ESL, which is going to help a lot with kids that cannot, are not good enough in English to qualify to go to first year in university. They can qualify to take two years and play at the same time. Okay. To take ESL. So this is what I understand. So you have both sides. One is for yeah. you to admission. Um, another one is uh, the good enough uh, badminton level for, for your team. Yeah. Right? That's right. The, the, the foremost one is uh, school admission. Schooling, uh, yes. Do they have to pass a SAT or TOEFL uh, requirement? Yes. Yes, they have to. Unless they have gone to an English school and they can prove that they went to an English school, then they don't have to. And any uh, uh, score that you're looking for of uh, from mm -hmm. the Yes, they do, and all those requirements will be sent by uh, by our counselor okay. when, when when whoever the students are. I, it's 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 they're really good at it. She strictly that's all she does is deal with international students. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, all right, so that's a qualification and. Um, well, I, I guess, um, you know, it's anything uh, that you like to uh, mention, um, because I don't know, you know, you normally come last time you came in November. So I'm, I'm not I'm not quite certain that we can travel you to uh, to Asia this November. But, um, you know, any last word, anybody who would like to um, contact you, I already post your contact um, in the chat room.
Uh, Absolutely, no problem at all. And I, I'm I'm uh, I'm free whenever it opens up. Uh, I I can make the trip. It's it's not a problem. I'm uh, I had my full time job. I'm retired, so it's full time badminton now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm stuck <laughs> with badminton. So it's not a problem to get out anytime. That's good. Uh, all right. Uh, Lee, uh, what about uh, Nun? Are you still there? I, I know he's uh, stepped off from the court a little bit. He's probably gone. He's probably went back to play. But uh, anyway, um, well, he, he, his academy in Thailand, Pun Sana, um, you know, he's a legend. And I'm sure that um, they can produce a lot of good players for you, Naeem. Yes. Lipui, any last word? Um, when, when is uh, the badminton will open in Malaysia? Um, well, it's it's quite similar in Naeem's case. You know, one time they said it's going to open, <laughs> and then the next they said it's closed. You know, um, so yeah, uh, so we are still waiting for it to reopen. So currently, we are just uh, doing our workshop training uh, so far. Um, cool. That's about it. So still waiting for the announcement uh, whether we, we can open or not. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, good luck, um, everybody, for uh, badminton. But you know, um, tennis and golf—they we lucky. Uh, golf already started their tournaments um, back in full schedule again. Uh, oh, in wow. So uh, and PGA is about to start the, their first tournament um, in in about two weeks. And next week, the Corn Ferry Tour, um, the, the, the Stepping Up uh, Tour, um, already have a tournament. So we we back in golf, golf tennis. It's um, I think they uh, some state already allow. Um, you know they'll be on court, but but not the tournament yet. No. Yeah, the good good part is uh, that the first sport that we we know that that will start uh, in Canada is going to be golf, badminton, soccer and track and field so first phase we are in that so you know that that's a good news okay good and I, nba just made an announcement yesterday uh they're back on a full schedule they will they will they will have a a leave um, so that's a that's a good progress but um well thanks again everybody um for joining us for today and uh, we learned a lot um, about badminton um from from canada from you naeem and uh, you know our good friends in Malaysia and also Thailand and uh, hopefully everybody stay safe. Social distancing is still important. Um, and thank God you don't have any protests over there in Asia. Mm. We are dealing with uh, the big one here in US right now. Yeah, crazy times. <laughs> yeah, so it is. <laughs> but um, stay with our social network, everybody. Um, we we are bringing and inviting all the good guests. Um, you know, so speaking um, with their expertise and advice about situation in sport, um, stay connected with our social network, U.S. College, College Sport Camp. And this uh, Sunday, we have a privilege uh, for number one uh, swimming team, high school team in U.S. that actually produce um, Olympian, um, such as the one in Asia, you probably heard of him, um, Joseph Schooling. So um, the coaches from the bowl school will be here with us uh, this Sunday. And Monday, it's about basketball. So we have coach from uh, Syracuse University will be here with us. So stay tuned. Thank you, everybody. And uh, stay safe. Yeah, thank you, George. Thank you. Thank, thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you.